All right. Good afternoon. Good morning, wherever you're joining us from. Welcome to the session with the University of Derby. Um, we've got university reps and academics with us here today who are going to run you through some generic information about the university and also through the business school um, and everything you need to equip you to start your business degree in the UK. Um, so handing over you to you, Anna, but before I do that, just quick housekeeping rules. Um, we will be staying on mute all the way up until the end of the session and we'll be spending the last couple of minutes um, on answering any questions that you may have. So do use the chat section um, to let us know if you've got any questions. So over to you, Anna. Thank you. And hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Anna Scott. I'm one of the international officers here at the University of Derby. Um, I cover the regions of Southeast Asia, Europe and North America. Um, and we have colleagues that uh, cover the rest of the world, but we'll do our best to answer your questions today, no matter where you come from. So welcome. I'm joined today by Melanie Powell, who's the course director for the Derby Business School Postgraduate Talk courses, and Vic Curtis, who is course director for the Derby Business School Undergraduate um, Programs. So I'm going to give you a little bit of information about Derby and the university, um, and then they're going to talk you through Derby Business School um, and the programs that we run here at the university. So just to start, um, a little bit of information about our um, student centres. So once you join the university, um, you'll be welcomed by um, the, the university student centres. We're really proud of the um, history we have of giving support to international students. Um, we've actually been ranked uh, number one in the UK for our former welcome to international students um, and for providing faith provision to international students and for our multicultural learning. So as part of that welcome, um, we have a whole team of people that will um, support your transition to the UK and into the university. Um, we have things like airport pickups. Um, so we know that traveling to the UK, for many of you, it might be the first time you've come to, to England. Um, so to make that um, journey easier, we can pick you up from the airport if you come on certain days. Um, we'll provide um, a special international event to welcome you to the university. Um, and then there'll be events throughout those welcome weeks that will support you to make friends um, and to kind of settle into life in the UK. We get asked a lot when we're out in country, where is Derby? Um, it's um, a city, but it's not the, the most well-known city across the world. It's based in the Midlands, um, so it's right in the heart of England. Um, and we've got city life and countryside right on our doorstep. So. Um, in terms of being in the UK, we're, we're very central. It's about 90 minutes away from London um, on the train and um, probably a similar time by car to Manchester. So you might have heard of cities like Nottingham and Birmingham, which are nearby. Because of where we are based in the UK, we've got great um, transport links across um, the UK. And um, so it's a really good base for exploring England, Scotland and Wales. Um, and we have something called the Peak District National Park, which is a really popular weekend destination. Um, so it's a great base for um, outdoor activities like walking and hiking, um, or just have a nice look around at the beautiful scenery. So um, we're really lucky to have that on our doorstep. In terms of the city of Derby, Derby's um, one of the most affordable cities in the UK. Um, and we've also been awarded a purple flag. So this is a system in the UK that recognises Derby as being safe, welcoming and a diverse city. So it's a very multicultural city. Um, not only do we have the Peak District on our doorstep, but we also have lots of green spaces and parks within the city. Um, so there's one called Mark Eaton Park that's just across from our main campus, Kettleston Road, which is a great place for you to have a stroll or to sit and eat your lunch and meet with friends. Um, and we actually have a very diverse international student population at the university. So we have students coming from over 100 countries and um, studying at both undergraduate and postgraduate level. So it's a lively and multicultural city and it's home to some of the major multinational companies like Rolls-Royce, Toyota and Bombardier. In terms of our campus, we're kind of a mixture between a city campus and a university campus. We have our main campus, um, which is called Kettleston Road. And that's where a lot of our programs will be based. It has um, a, a sports center. It's where our library is and our uh, students union. 
Um, and then between that and the city centre, we have several other buildings that are university buildings as well. So we have Mark Eaton Street, um, which is just a short walk or bus ride away from Caddleston Road. And that we have our engineering um, and some art programmes. We have Britannia Mill, um, which again is just slightly nearer to the city centre that houses our art programmes. And then right in the city centre, we have a building called One Frygate Square, which is our law building. Um, and I think we're going to talk about it a little bit later, but excitingly, just next to the law building in the centre of town, um, we've started to plan to build our new business school. So it's a compact area of the city. We call it the uh, University Quarter. Um, within all of that area, the university accommodation is as well. So wherever you are in the University Quarter, you're never very far away from a university building or accommodation building. Um, the, the maximum you would walk between the buildings is probably about 15 minutes. Um, and you can easily get into the city centre where all the shops are um, and the train station and the bus station if you wanted to go elsewhere. So I'm going to pass over now uh, to Melanie and Vic. Um, and we're going to talk to you about Derby Business School. Hi, uh, I'll introduce myself again. I'm Melanie. Um, the Derby Business School is, is a really well-established and large part of our College of Business Law and Social Science. And the Derby Business School, in amongst its activities, obviously we're teaching on full-time and part-time programmes at both undergraduate and postgraduate level, but we also have a range of postgraduate students, uh, students in business studying a uh, um, a doctorate in business and we also have students studying academic PhDs and, and MPhils. We've also got active research staff and research um, activities going on locally in the local region, UK and internationally and, and we have um, a good reputation for that, that research we, which we might talk about a little bit later. But the Derby Business School overall as well has links internationally and nationally in the UK. And for example, we are a member of the European Foundation of Management Development. And that links us into an international European focus. And also it um, highlights our focus on uh, management and management practice and responsible management and sustainability. But we're also really connected to the local region and we were awarded the Small Business Charter by the Chartered Association of Business Schools in the UK for that. And it really does recognize our uh, excellence in student enterprise, in working with small businesses and the analysis that we can do for the local economy. Vic, would you like to add anything there? No, so I think you I think you're doing an excellent job there, Mel. Just kind of uh, explaining our uh, certainly our links to local business is is really really important to us because a lot of our um, a lot of our modules, a lot of our courses, both at undergraduate and postgraduate, use um, use those links in terms of some of the assessments that we do. So um, certainly, kind of on, on in the business subjects in marketing, um, accounting. We try to um, have live briefs uh, for a lot of our a lot of our assessments to actually kind of tied in so that you're actually doing something that's uh, very much real world. So that small business charter that kind of really kind of uh, solidifies that relationship with the kind of the small small business community um, and and you know the, some of the other um, larger companies that we talked about earlier, you know, people like um, Rolls Royce and Toyota. Yeah, it does. So, and maybe the next slide, please, Anna. Okay. So this, um, uh, I'll let Vic talk about <laughs> the picture in a minute. <laughs> uh, but perhaps just to say that um, our, our university facilities are very good. On our main university campus, we have um, library and much of the time when students are studying and writing assessments, we have 24 hour opening hours, which really helps them. We have um, virtual access to our library materials as well, which also allows students to study wherever they are. We've got a sports centre with several million pounds are spent on our new sports centre, which is a shining example of lots of activities going on there and lots of um, space to join in those. 
We also have restaurants and cafe uh, facilities uh, on the campuses. And as Anna has already said, uh, it's closely linked to the accommodation. All our sites, uh, study sites are close to the accommodation. We are uh, in the process of, um, we've gone beyond planning. We're now in the process of, of looking to get started on building our new business school and perhaps because he's quite closely involved in it we'd like to say a little bit about that picture <laughs> yeah i mean so so this uh this is a an artist representation of the the new derby business school which will be built uh in the center of uh derby so if you if you actually look to the slightly left of the picture where you can see just above that white car that's actually one frygate square so that was what uh, anna mentioned earlier so literally on the site that's directly opposite, we are building the new business school. And those two buildings are effectively going to be the whole of the College of Business Law and Social Sciences. So this particular uh, business school, it's gonna be something like about 9,000 square meters. Um, when it's built and, and uh, in the fullness of time, it will accommodate something like about five and a half to 6,000 students. Um, it's going to have a, a range of modern facilities. So kind of we've got a, a big lecture theatre in there, for example. We've got uh, a creativity lab that we're looking at. We're looking at um, maybe some, some VR technology, sorry, some virtual reality technology. Um, and all of these are in terms of trying to get um, the students to experience things. So it's, we're very much in terms of, of active learning and, and getting, um, getting our students to do things. So yes, you need to know the models. Yes, you need to know the knowledge, but it's about active and kind of experiencing things that's really kind of where we're where we're with our, our kind of um our niche area is um so i think that uh, that new derby business school is a really kind of um it's a real uh, investment by the university i mean we are talking kind of um somewhere in the region of about 50 million pounds that's going to be um invested in that building and, and all the the facilities that go along with it so um we're looking forward to that yeah, it's really exciting. And for those of you who were coming as an undergraduate, you would you would be in that building, not in your first year, but uh, in subsequent time. Yeah. OK, next slide, please. Alex. There's just a picture of me. <laughs> I'd still, we did, couldn't squeeze Vic on. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a deliberate, a deliberate ploy. <laughs> Um, so it's just just here really it, to focus on our um, academic provision and particularly on the full time programs that we have running at undergraduate level uh, for full time three three years uh, or for those students who are coming in as direct entry students, possibly you might be coming in uh, onto one of our one year top up degrees. So Vic will probably talk about those in a minute. Um, we've got a range of degrees around business management, business and management. We have a, a range of degrees around international business, uh, marketing, accounting, and in the economics and finance areas. And we have some other specialisms as well. Similarly, in the postgraduate area, our full-time degrees are one year in length. That's a full 12 months. Uh, and we have degrees, again, in and around management and management specialisms. And we have degrees that focus on international business. We have degrees around accounting and marketing, but also in the areas, specialist areas like logistics, HRM, hospitality and tourism. So we'll be telling you something about those in the next um, few minutes. OK, then. So this is this is the um, the range of uh, undergraduate programs we have at, uh, at Derby. Uh, as you can see, we kind of we do cover um, a whole range of different uh, different areas. So um, our, our principal um, program within the kind of the business and management areas are BA business management. Um, now, within this this one program, we actually have um, the main program, which has got um, a, a lot of options on. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but there are also pathways within the, the business management degree. So what that means is that in the first year, um, everybody on all um, pathways and in the main business management program takes the same six modules. So each of those modules is worth 20 credits. So six modules means that you do three in the autumn semester, you do three in the spring semester. Um, at the end, you, you kind of like pass 120 credits. 
when you get to the second year, though, that's when you can start to make your choice in terms of whether you want to stay on the, the straight business management uh, degree. Now, if you do that, then you have um, 80 credits where, you know, you have the um, the core modules, which everybody on business management takes. But you also have 40 credits, which so that's effectively one 20 credit module in the um, autumn semester, one 20 credit module in the spring semester, where you have a range of options from different subject pathways that you can take. Or you can actually go on to one of the pathways, such as we have here, uh, one around marketing, one around finance, one around human resource management, one around entrepreneurship, one around supply chain and logistics. And in those cases, then those option modules will be specifically in that subject area. So if you did um, business management and marketing, for example, then you would do four modules, the same as everybody else on business management, but you would have two marketing uh, modules, both at level, uh, level five and level six, i.e. your second year and third year. Um, that, that particular approach, we, we take a lot across many of our um, undergraduate portfolio um, programs. So we also have an international business management um, program. Same idea in terms of uh, six modules in the first year, um, six modules in the second year, six modules in the third year, but the four of those in the second and third year are core, you have to do them, and then two are options. Um, if you go on, if you keep on um, the, the, the straight um, international business management, then you get to choice of some of those options. If you decide you want to go onto one of the pathways, then those two option modules will be pathway specific modules. So you could have two modules about international relations, for example. Uh, similar for marketing, we have a straight marketing um, degree, but we also have pathways for digital marketing and for PR and advertising. Um, our accounting programs, um, we have a, a BA accounting and finance, which is kind of like very much geared towards the accounting um, of current careers in accounting, but we also have um, business accounting and finance. And that is more kind of the, the business side of accounting. Um, and then on the, the economic side, we have uh, BA economics, we have BSc economics and finance. And then we also have um, several other programs which are in our, our discipline of um, CCHT, which is uh, the Corporate Centre for Hospitality and Tourism. So we've got uh, international tourism management, we've got international hospitality management, and we've got event management as well. So we have, um, I think it's 14 programs kind of like across uh, a very wide range of um of different subject areas so there's you know there's, there's something there which interests pretty much everybody do you want to say something perhaps about um the, just generally about the assessment i think in some programs like ba accounting and finance where it's associated with um an accreditation there are formal examination but in most of the other programs there, we don't have formal examinations. We're largely based on coursework. And as Vic has been saying before, that coursework more often than not is has a live brief element. So you're either using current data, you're using a current business that's coming in to talk to you and you're analyzing something for that business, or it might be a current issue that you're analyzing. So we try to really get that applied focus through coursework. Um, and it's only yeah. where it's required for an accreditation. And that's specifically, I think it's a BA accounting and finance where there yeah. are, we, we are required for that accreditation to use an examination process. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a really good point that is Mel. So, I mean, we, so accounting and finance is really the, the only um, discipline where, where those exams take place. You might, there might be individual modules where there are kind of um, exams, usually where it's some accounting subject uh, within the module that might be, for example, on business management. Um, but again, in, in very often you have the choice as to whether you take that or not. So if, if um, exams is not something you're particularly happy with, you don't like doing, then you can certainly kind of look at your options and say, can I choose something else that, I'm, that possibly doesn't have an exam? Um, I, but I think Mel also made a really good point there about accreditations. 
So our BA business management degree, for example, is also accredited by the Chartered Management Institute. Um, if you pass the degree, you automatically get a kind of a level five diploma from, from the Chartered Management Institute. Um, and in fact, we, we do use um, a lot of their data that they you know, the, the website that they have has got a lot of management information on, um, and that is used quite heavily, quite extensively within the, within the programme. Um, our marketing um, programmes, for example, are um, accredited by the Chartered Institute of Marketing. So those, those type of accreditations are also very, very important um, in terms of A, additional qualifications, but B, tying into the kind of the, um, what you potentially could go on to do a career in as well. So the, the next slide then, please, Anna. <clears throat> So we also have a kind of a range of top up programs. So typically a top up program is a one year program and it is the, the, the final year. So the kind of the third year, the, the level six. Um, generally, these run um, in association with the third year of the particular um, program. So, for example, business management, um, the business management top up. Effectively, what you do is that you come in at the third year and you run the third year of business management. Same for the international business um, top-ups and the, the business and finance top-ups. Um, same with the marketing. With accounting, it's slightly different. There is actually a specific BA international accounting program, um, which then again is not, um, it's, it's not accredited to the point where you need to take exams. So kind of going back to the point that Mel was making earlier, with that BA International Accounting, it is much more coursework based. I mean, I think there are a couple of modules that do have exams, but um, the majority of it is actually coursework based. So again, that, that again is uh, another alternative in terms of uh, taking a one year um, top up program rather than a full three year degree. You do have to have two years of appropriate undergraduate credits in order to join these you can't come from a level you've got to have done two years on a degree or an equivalent of a, of level five so an hnd or something like that in order to join these because they are effectively at level uh five so that's that's sorry that's sorry level, level six. six that's yeah, level, yeah six. level six so you need to have the equivalent of a level five qualification so that would yeah. be second year of our un undergraduate uh, diploma in equivalent to the UK. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a fair point. Mel. I, I was I was taking that as red. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, um, no, that's a fair to, point. Yeah, just to make sure everybody understands. Yeah. Okay, so I think we could probably move on to the postgrad. What you can see here is that we have postgraduate taught postgraduate programs, MSCs and MAs, in the same areas that we have for the undergraduate. So for example, management is one of our biggest areas. And the biggest program we have on that is our MBA Global. And the MBA Global is, is a structured to develop management practice, management skills and management knowledge um, in, for somebody who is pushing towards after an undergraduate degree towards a management career. And we also have an MBA in global finance. So if you wanted a specialism in finance in your um, management and in your Master of Business Administration, then you can also take that too. <coughs> we also have an MSc in management, and this is actually designed for students who are coming from a non-business or management background at undergraduate. Normally we would expect for the MBA we would expect you to have done an undergraduate degree in a business or a management area. That could include economics or accounting, but within the sorts of areas we've just been talking about at undergraduate level. But if you have got a degree in something different in computing, engineering, arts, um, humanities, languages, something different, then you, that is exactly what our MSc management is for. So if you're coming from a non-management undergraduate background and you're looking to develop management understanding and management skills, then the MSc management would be appropriate for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, then the next major area in uh, our DBS graduate programs is international business. 
and we have four international business programs. Rather like Pathways, they all have a similar core in international economics and international strategy, but they differ in terms of having some cores in their areas, for example, finance, HRM, and marketing. These programs are designed to look at the, <coughs> sorry, uh, to look at the area of business rather than management. So management is about the process of strategic development and activities inside organizations. International business is about relationships or business in an international context and the theories that drive those relationships. So for, for example, why particular sectors grow or contract, why um, industries create uh, alliances and joint practice with other sectors. And so their integration vertically and horizontally. So you're really looking at a different, you're looking at the same things, but from a different lens, a different perspective when you're studying international business compared with management, because that's often what students ask, so what's the difference? In the, in the case of these three degrees, uh, four degrees in international business, they all got a, a, a core, which everybody has to do. Then they've got a core for their specialism, which is named in the degree. And then they've got a series of options. So you've always got an opportunity to study some HRM in any of these programs or study some accounting and finance in any of these programs or some marketing. So really the difference between them is if you want to have a title in your postgraduate qualification that says marketing or says uh, HRM or finance, but you wanna focus on international business, then these would be very appropriate for you. Before I go any further, I would say that all of these programs have got a similar structure. To do a, a master's degree in the UK, you will need to do 60 credits of research. We call it independent study at the University of Derby, but it is really a piece of your own research and it has to be focused research. It has to be applied, analyzed, and it has to be evidence-based and it's 60 credits. So that's like three 20 credit modules all based on this idea of research. So whichever program you choose in postgraduate study, you will have that component. So going back to the other programs, you can see marketing and accounting. We've got one program for each, um, MSc Marketing Management and MSc Accounting and Finance. MSc Marketing Management, like the management in the international business programs, you just really need some background degree that's relevant in um, business or management. But in accounting, in order to do MSc Accounting and Finance, you would need a degree in accounting and finance you would not be able to take that program unless you have that particular focus. So if you wanted to do some finance, but don't have a degree in accounting and finance, you would need to go towards the MBA or you'd need to go towards MSc International Business and Finance. Because um, the MSc Accounting and Finance degree is designed to get you to a point where you can take the uh, professional qualification ACCA at the highest level, at the professional level. And so you don't get the accreditation, but you have done all the work for all of the exams. So you're ready to literally go from your degree straight into those exams and get your professional qualification. And hence why you need the undergraduate degree. But the other specialisms, um, Hello. students are becoming increasingly more interested in supply chain issues. Given the COVID situation and the situation we're facing now with uh, war in Ukraine. We are looking at changes in the supply chain for a whole variety of uh, important products. And those supply chain issues are very important to international businesses and to management now. And many students are looking to really build expertise in this after their degree. And so if you're interested in working in international supply chains or logistics, then we have an MSc in Global Operations and Supply Chain Management that would really start your career path if you're interested in that particular focus. Similarly, human resource management is becoming a, a major area for career growth globally. We've got uh, right across the world, 
uh, limitations on um, the supply of talent into industries. And there is a competitive drive to find the right kind of talent. And therefore there's a bigger industry working behind that that seeks out and matches that talent to the organizations globally. And so if you're interested in a career pathway from where you are now into human resource management, so you might be around training and development, or it might be in recruitment, whatever that is, then we also have an MSc in human resource management where you can study all of those issues and, and the issues around uh, diversity and inclusion as well uh, for a specialist career. And finally, similarly, if you're interested in working in the tourism or in the hospitality management sector, you might want to start that career path by taking an MSc focused on those areas. So we have the two, MSc International Hospitality Management and MSc International Tourism Management. These are very recently revalidated and they have a strong focus on sustainability in these areas, uh, as all of our programs do. And it's now a major development for our undergraduate and postgraduate programs to focus on responsible management and also on sustainable business throughout. So really for any of these programs, you would need a minimum of a 2-2 degree in a relevant area. And particularly for accounting, it would need to be accounting and finance. Most all of these programs except accounting and finance have coursework. We focus on coursework, the coursework is applied as it is in the undergraduate program. You'll be working with real-time data, you'll be using systems, as we'll show you in a minute, like our Bloomberg Finance Lab to get real-time current data on all sorts of business areas, not just finance. And you'll be using libraries with companies for your core modules, where you'll be working with an international company to develop a strategy for them. So that's, that's the kind of exciting work that you can think about, as well as doing a research project on an area that really interests you and will help you develop your career. Okay, I think we can probably move on. So I think um, what we're trying to say here about our staff is that our staff, of course, have a wide range of academic expertise and experience. Uh, our staff have all got postgraduate qualifications and they are writing and researching in the areas in which they're teaching. So we have a really strong uh, academic team to support you in your learning, whether you're at undergraduate or postgraduate level. Uh, these, um, you can find out more about our staff on our website, and you can find out more about uh, some of the research that they do. We have in the business school, we have particular strengths in our research focus. We have the Center for Business Improvement. And within that, we have research that's related to accounting and ethics. And we have research that's strongly focused on economics and on enterprise and the evaluation of enterprise, as well as sustainable business and growth and also responsible customer management for marketing. So you can see that all our main areas are backed by current research and our staff are engaged in that research. We also have um, an internationally renowned center for supply chain improvement. And this is a, a key research focus for our staff in um, relation to that postgraduate degree of supply chain improvement. You can see a little pile of books there. And actually, if you look really closely, they're all mine. <laughs> Not because wow. I took the picture. <laughs> I don't know where the picture came from, but in Greek, uh, in Spanish, and in English, there's a whole name. Financial accounting, that's definitely not mine. <laughs> the, the business and enterprise one, though, is mine. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. So it's just to show that actually, you know, and, and in terms of, of textbooks, and uh, we are up there providing um, uh, textbooks for universities all over the, the UK and all over Europe as well. So it's to show our academic expertise. <laughs> Okay, I think we can move on. We've just, um, we've just been through, um, the UK has just evaluated all 
UK universities for their research excellence, their excellence in producing um, important relevant research. And those results are just out and we are doing very well in that framework. And that supports uh, the international excellence level of our research that I've just been talking about. And you can see here, it's, it, it tells us that we submitted 27 case studies. Um, and this really, those case studies are showing how our research has really had an impact on organizations, businesses, not necessarily private profit companies, it could be not-for-profit third sector, but it's actually showing the impact that we have had. It's not just uh, journal articles that nobody reads, it's, it's, it's the impact. And that is part of our, um, the whole way that we teach and we look at learning about applied learning practices and having some kind of impact in the community. So as you can see there, uh, of those case studies, ours included the strategy for greener economy. It is a big focus for us. Uh, logistics, again, is another very big focus, as I've been talking about. And as Vic has already said, that importance of working with smaller firms and enterprise. Uh, and that's really been a very important part of the development of the business school and our research. So I think we can move on. Vic has already talked about real world learning and so have I, but um, sometimes it's difficult to understand what that means if, you, if you've not studied in a university. You might be involved in, for example, some projects and certainly uh, on most of the degrees, we have libraries for assessments or we give you opportunities where local businesses and regional businesses are looking for short-term internships, students can work for 80 hours on a specific project. And that gives you the opportunity to get work experience, but to actually build project management skills, to have something that you can put on your CV that isn't just, I'm good at this, I'm good at that. No, I actually did this. This is what I did. And I did it with this organization and I produced an output that they needed. And my marketing students, uh, our accounting students, um, our law students, all sorts of students work with individuals and organizations in the locality on this kind of consultancy project. We also have a lot of network activities, business network activities going on inside the university where businesses use our premises for their network meetings. And usually in most cases, you will be invited to join those meetings if you want to start networking, if you want to start meeting people in business and finding out what they do and how they, um, what they're looking for in their graduates. It's a great opportunity for you to actually get into the networking. We'll maybe mention later the Futures Award. It's a non-credit bearing award that we, you can all use if you come to the University of Derby, if you at, engage with consultancy projects or network events, you get hours for those and those hours build into a non-credit bearing award that would go on your final higher education award statement. So all of these things that you do to build your expertise, extracurricular activity, you have a way of capturing that at the University of Derby in an extra award. Um, we have lots of study trips. Uh, we are, we're looking, we've taken students to China in the past, to Vienna. We've been to The Hague to look at the International Court. All sorts of things have happened. Um, and we do like to take our students out into industry, into uh, local industry. Vic, you might have some examples. Well, we cer certainly kind of, um, we, we try to use, I'm um, just kind of like bringing up the next one about kind of live briefs. And as we said before, actually bringing in um, local organizations who've got a specific problem, which we then try to kind of incorporate within a particular brief. I mean, to, to give you an example, um, earlier on today, I was marking, um, I, I do a level six, which is a final year module called international entrepreneurship. And we have a, a, a local business from the um, East Midlands airport. Who, who basically want to expand um, outside the UK. So they came in, um, they kind of launched the brief that basically says, well, all right, guys, where do we go? That, that was basically the question which they asked the students. So the students have kind of been out and they've, they've been researching and decided um, one, one country within the EU and one country outside of the EU. 
um, you know, based on, on all of their research, uh, what sort of market entry strategy they suggest that this company needs to do, um, what sort of marketing they need to do. But rather than put it all together in a report, I said, no, let's do that as a 10 minute video. So when Mel was talking about um, students actually having an output, something that they could actually then go and show a potential employer, they could actually show them this video and say, look, this is the kind of the quality of work that I can actually do. Um, and, and importantly, I mean, I think for this particular thing, I've, I've got about um, 50 videos coming in. The top maybe half dozen videos will go back to the organization so that they can actually see what it is that the, the students are suggesting. So we're kind of like closing the loop. Um, and I say, so again, it benefits the students because they, they're actually doing real work, if you like, but it benefits the organizations because they kind of get these, um, these kind of like these nuggets of, um, these nuggets of what the students view. And very often that can be very, very different from um, somebody who's been kind of embedded in the business. They almost kind of get a bit blinkered. So to be able to, to kind of get a, a, an outside viewpoint and of somebody who's, who's, um, looks at things with fresh eyes, shall we say. Um, and that can be really, really useful as far as the, uh, as far as the kind of the businesses are concerned. Yeah, yeah, I think, that's great. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think Mel can talk better about the financial markets lab than uh, I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can actually see on the pictures, we do have a financial markets lab. We do um, link into Bloomberg <laughs> and Refinitiv uh, Icon and our students, mainly on international business and on economics, and accounting and finance are so using those labs to actually generate live data current right this minute to analyze what's really going on today, not a year ago or six months ago, but today. And you can learn to use the Bloomberg uh, facilities and you can get accreditation for that as well, the Bloomberg Market Certificate uh, as an undergraduate or as a postgraduate. So these are all extras, but it's all about that link to real world activity. If you want to go into the finance sector and you say, I can use Bloomberg, they'll probably sit you in front of the terminal and say, go on then show us. And if you can do something whizzy, they're gonna be dead impressed. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's what it's about really. It's about really getting those professional skills to get you the best um, forward projection into your career. So I think we can, probably uh, move on there now. So yeah, I think I, I think we've yeah, we've we, I, th I think this this kind of this slide is, is pretty much self explanatory. I mean, these are just some of the companies that our students and our graduates go on to be employed by um, both in kind of like um, graduate roles and, and then after they finish their postgraduate qualifications as well. Um, I mean, th these are kind of like um, 40, 100 companies mm. uh, and you know that they, they kind of our students kind of go on and um, have great careers within you know these these big organizations but but also there, there are a lot of um, a lot of our students kind of go on and actually uh, either go to run or certainly have management positions within um, the, the small business and the medium business uh, community and that can be a real a real good source of um, of, of careers to look at uh, in terms of uh, rather than just kind of looking at the kind of the, the big ones, I mean, these are just the kind of the, the top names, if you like, but it's um, a lot of the small businesses, uh, they, they struggle sometimes more so because, you know, you, you almost certainly if, for a business management or an international business management degree, you are exposed to so many different aspects of business that you, you can kind of go into a, a small organization and you, you can almost get, you know, get your finger in lots and lots of different pies. Whereas if you're, if you're kind of accounting, you might kind of just kind of go into the kind of the accounting function. So it's really one of these, um, one of these things where you can, you can do whatever you like. Um, we also kind of have a, a lot of our, our students kind of go on placement between the second year and the third year um, on the undergraduate side of things. And again, uh, these are some of the, the, the organizations that we, um, you know, we use for those, those sort of roles. There are lots of opportunities to work with large and small organizations through our short part-time internships. So DHL is, um, they're based at uh, the airport, I think. Yes, they are. Uh, yeah, and they usually provide an internship, a couple of internships every year, short-term, that our second year students can take or third year students. And it 
takes you into an international environment. And these are really great ways to get experience and to start to think, oh, I definitely don't want to be in that business. Or yes, I really do want to be in this business. And it gives you that chance to sample. Many of these are small scale companies with really great projects. The projects are all vetted and you get paid good salaries for the, for the work that you do for these short-term internships. So you can get a chance to work with some of these bigger and smaller organizations even before you graduate. I think we'll back to you, Anna. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so we've had a few questions through on the chat that are about entry requirements um, and costs and visas and things like that. So um, I'll go through the rest of the presentation and um, because a lot of that will be covered. Um, and then we'll get to the questions at the end of it. So because today we knew we were covering many different countries and many different, uh, different situations, what we've put here is the general entry requir requirements for the undergraduate and the postgraduate taught programmes. Um, we, of course, accept um, applications and qualifications from all over the world. What will happen is that we will look at your qualification um, and we will... Um, look to see if that is the equivalent of the um, entry requirements. So typically for undergraduate um, courses, we would expect you to have the equivalent of A-levels in your country. So it depends on the country you come from. Some countries, for example, have a shorter um, high school and a longer um, degree programme. So you might do a four year degree because the UK our degrees are three years. Students from coming from those um, countries might need to come into a foundation year of the programme. But we very much look at each application on a case by case basis. Um, and we have published entry requirements for each country um, on our website. So you can have a look there. Um, and then if after the presentation and after the webinar, you have specific questions. Again, you can contact us through the international pages on our website. Um, if you've got a specific qualification that you're not sure um, whether it's the equivalent or not. Typically for postgraduate taught courses, um, and he's mentioned, you'll need the equivalent of a UK 2-2 bachelor's degree. Um, and usually that needs to be in a related subject, depending on the programme that you are, are applying for. So for um, if English isn't your first language, um, if you're applying from a different country, you will need to show that you have good enough English to access the learning on that program. Um, there's no point in you applying and coming um, to study with us if you're not going to be able to listen in lectures and, and produce work. So we have set criteria for that. Typically, it's IELTS 6.0 with a minimum of 5.5 in all areas for the undergraduate programmes. And typically, it's IELTS 6.5 with a minimum of 5.5 in all areas for the postgraduate programmes. Again, there are differences in different programmes. The best place to go to look at what the entry criteria for your programme that you're applying for is on the website. Um, and you can go to entry criteria on there. Um, and again, if you've got any questions, you can contact the international team. When you're making an application, you will need to submit your qualifications, your um, latest transcript, your work experience letters or a CV, especially if you're applying for a postgraduate course, the, the program leader is going to want to see that you've got uh, want to see that you've got experience. Um, and the best thing to do is submit as much information as you can um, so that they have all of that information at the start of the application. You'll need to submit your proof of English and a copy of your passport. And then we also ask for a letter of reference. So that might be from a current tutor or someone at your school or university or it might be from a current employer if you are currently in employment. Um, and then you will also need to submit a personal statement. So we get often asked lots of questions on this. It just gives um, the admissions tutor a really good idea of why you want to apply to the university, what's inspired you to study that particular course and what your ambitions are um, and helps them to get to know you uh, a little bit more throughout the application process. In terms of our fees, so these are the fees for 2022. So if you're applying for this September, um, and we also have some programs that have January starts. So these are still going to be the fees for the January 2023 um, programs as well. So if you did need to come into a foundation year, the fee is £14,045, the same as the undergraduate program. 
and then our postgraduate programs for £14,700. The MBA Global um, is a little bit higher price, that's £15,450. There are different scholarship options, I'm going to kind of talk about that in the next slide, um, but one in particular note for this September is the £2,000 discount um, on all postgraduate taught courses um, that qualify for that. Um, so that would reduce the fee down a little bit there. When you're going to university, it's probably um, one of the biggest investments that you're going to make, especially if you're going to study abroad. Um, so you've got two main costs to consider, really. You've got your cost of your programme. So those are the costs that we've just talked about. And then you've got your living costs. OK, so um, none of these kind of fees are inclusive of things like your rent and your bills things that you're going to need like food and socialising. We've given you a rough amount um, there on the screen of what you might spend. It's very much dependent on you, um, depending on how many times you go out to eat, whether you're cooking at home, whether you're going out um, to buy lots of clothes and socialise lots. But these are kind of the average amounts and that we talked about. Derby is a very reasonable place to live. Um, and then you've also got to think about your transport, um, whether that's around the city um, or get into your lectures, but there is the university bus that, that you can get on. And like we said before, it's a very compact city. You can very easily walk between lectures and your accommodation. So in terms of scholarships and discounts, we have a range available at both undergraduate and postgraduate level. Um, so the, the, depending on the amount depends on whether you have to make an application for it. So the postgraduate taught scholarship that is automatic for postgraduate programs starting in September 2022, um, that will automatically be automatically be applied to your um, your account when you enrol. But the International Excellence Student Scholarship, which is five thousand pounds, and the Vice Chancellor Scholarship, um, which is one year fully funded with your degree, you will need to make a separate application. What we say is you wait until you've been made an offer to study with us. Um, and then if you go on the international pages, there's a link through to creating an application. What we're asking is for students to submit 500 words, um, talking about a particular subject that's inspired them to study their degree programme. Um, so it can be on, on the, any topic you want, but we want to know about why you want to study that programme what again your career aspirations are and how you've been inspired and how that's going to impact on your life um, and your future career going forward. There are closing dates for the um, scholarships. There's some coming up at the end of May um, and then by the end of June, the scholarships will all have closed. Um, so if you go on the website and go to derby.ac.uk forward slash scholarships, all of the terms and conditions are on there and how you apply is on there. Like I said, wait before you um, until you have an offer um, and then you can sit, submit your application with the international merit scholarship which is worth 1500 pounds um, that is also an automatic um, scholarship so our admissions team will review your documents and if you qualify for that um, then they will automatically award you that you don't have to make an application if you go on the terms and conditions there's a link on there to um, the, the general um, qualification minimums that you need to, um, to qualify for a scholarship. So, for example, students coming from Nigeria, you must have a first class undergraduate degree to qualify for um, one of the postgraduate scholarships. Um, so please have a look at that before you apply. Um, because we can't let you know if you've not been successful, why you've not been successful, um, but it will let you know whether it kind of it's worth you making that application. There's also lots of different other scholarships for sport scholarships, um, and there's an international alumni discount. So if you've already studied an undergraduate program at the university and you want to study a postgraduate program, um, and there's also something called the early bird discount. Um, so if you pay all of your fees, before you enrol at the university, we will discount um, that amount by 500 pounds. Um, so there's lots of different options for you. Best thing to do is to check the website. Um, and if you've got any questions, again, you can, you can ask through the international pages. 
In terms of support at the university, we've talked about the college student centres. Each college um, has its own student centre with um, people specifically trained to give you advice um, and to point you in the right direction, really. Um, whether that's um, any advice you need on well-being, on finances, on careers and employability. Um, so we have the student well-being team. We have the smart team who can advise you on any difficulties you might be having with money or finances. Um, and the careers and employment team can support you following university um, to get on the way with your career. Um, they'll hold different events, they'll hold CV workshops um, and they can give you advice on applying for jobs. When you start at the university and you enroll, everyone gets allocated a personal tutor and they're the people that you can go to throughout your course for any academic um, questions um, and concerns, any questions you might have on modules or um, on any of the work you're doing. We also have the library support, which is on site, um, and we have an on site doctor's surgery. And then on the main site at Caroston Road, we have the multi faith centre, which is an area with um, many religions represented, um, or you can just go and have some quiet time there. There are areas for, pray, uh, for prayer as well. Um, and then we do have the Derby English Language Centre. So the Derby English Language Centre can support you before you apply to the university. They hold their own Derby English language test, which um, if you are applying to the university can be used to meet your academic conditions instead of an IELTS test. And we do run some pre-sessional English language courses as well, but they can also support you whilst you're at the university. So if you feel like you are struggling with some of the academic English um, or you are struggling with presentation skills while you're at university, do access that support because they are here for students that don't have English as their first language um, we don't want you to be sat in lectures to kind of worried or struggling. Access the support, speak to your personal tutor because um, it is available for you. In terms of the student life, when you enrol at the university, you'll automatically become a member of what we call the Union of Students here. So the union runs more than 60 societies from academic to active, charity, religious, cultural um, there's generally something for every everyone. If, if there's something you're interested in, um, we usually have a society. And if not, you can set up your own society. So I think you need to have about four other people, three or four other people, and you can set up your own society if it's something that it's not re represented. Um, we have a, something called Derby Worldwide, which is our international society. They run lots of different events and um, cultural uh, evenings. Um, and we have lots and lots of sports societies as well. So if you want to come to the university and play competitive sport, there's usually a team for you. Um, we've got more than 40 sports that are represented and they all compete in the um, British University and Colleges uh, League. Um, so it gets very competitive and we have kind of rival games and it's, it's very fun. If sport's not for you though, um, you can go and watch or and the, you can have a look at one of the other societies, but coming to university is a big step. It's a big change, especially when you're moving to a different country. If you can kind of access things you're interested in, um, then it just helps you to make friends and to meet people um, and gives you that kind of other side of, of the whole university experience. Just a little bit about student living. Um, so we have nine halls in Derby. We showed you on the map earlier, they're very close by to the university buildings. It's up to you where you apply to live. Um, again, on the website, you can have tours of each halls and you can have a look at what's available and where they are. But they're generally about 10 to 20 minutes walk um, from the campus buildings. Um, it's a really good way of international students feeling settled um, and meeting new people um, because it takes out all of that kind of anxiety around having to pay bills and, and find somewhere. It includes all your bills, it includes free Wi-Fi, it includes 24 hour security and free weekly cleaning, uh, which is great. I'd love to, to have that kind of weekly cleaning going on. Um, so you'll always have your individual room and you will um, share a kitchen with usually six to eight other people depending on where you're living, which is a really nice place um, to kind of join together and cook together and, and, and socialize together. And then each hall has its different social spaces as well. So you can see 
the bottom of that slide, um, most of the halls have either a pool table or um, table tennis or um, a TV downstairs and they hold different nights, um, whether it's a pizza night or a film night to help you to get to know people um, throughout the year. The living in halls costs between 113 and 150 pounds per week. It depends on where you're applying for, where you live and the cost. Probably the biggest difference in that cost is whether you have your own bathroom or whether you have a shared bathroom. Um, but if you do have a shared bathroom, the most people you will be sharing it with is your flatmates, which is kind of six to eight other people. Um, and they're generally very nice. You'll always get your own room with your own bed um, and your own working space so you can do all your, your studying. We do have private accommodation in, in Derby. Um, some people do opt for that, which is fine. Um, all we would say is if you are going to apply for private accommodation, if you go through the website, there is a link to um, accommodation that's been approved by the university. So it just means that we've vetted the landlords and we've approved and said that it's, it's good quality um, accommodation. And then the other thing that you need to be aware of is, although it can look cheaper on the face of it, um, your bills might not be included. So with the cost of kind of bills going up everywhere, you just need to be aware um, that you might get um, a hefty gas bill if you, if you have a very cold winter and you've come from somewhere warm. So it's just things that you need to be aware of, whereas in the student halls, all of that is included for you. So just the last thing to say is that we've got something called Derby On Demand on the website. Um, there's lots and lots of videos on there. So there's videos from the programme leaders, and from uh, academics, from accommodation, from students. They can show you around Derby, the city, different bars and restaurants. They can show you around the halls, buildings. Um, it just gives you a little bit of a feeling of the university. We hold regular open days, but we know many international students can't get to the UK um, and visit the university. So this is the, the next best thing, really. It gives you some kind of way of getting to know the university from a student's point of view. Um, so if you go down onto the website and sign up for Derby On Demand, you can have a look through all of those videos as well. Okay, so that's all from us. Um, I think we're gonna have a look through some questions now. Um, and I think, Ravina, are you gonna help us yes to Hi, Anne, yeah and um, thank you Vic thank you Melanie yeah that was a great presentation very concise and informative I think we were getting to a point where um, students were starting to ask about entry requirements and you just jumped in at the right point of time so just there's quite a few questions but I'll try and summarize them yeah because we're a bit over time so we'll spend the next maybe two three minutes answering whatever okay. we can um, so we've got the main question seems to be all about English language tests and certifications um, okay. So students are asking if they can submit TOEFL scores or anything, any alternative scores to IELTS in order to apply to the institution. Yeah, so there, there are other um, qualifications that we accept. The list is on the website. Um, so we accept things like the Pearson academic tests. Um, it, it depends on um, the qualification, when you've completed it. Um, and sometimes it depends on the program you're applying for. Um, so again, the best thing is if you have specific questions about your qualification is to get in contact and answer that. We do, like I said, have the Derby English language test. So if IELTS is one of the conditions on your program, on your offer, you can complete the Derby English language test if you are only applying to the university and we will waive the, the IELTS um, requirements with that. And on that same note, um, there's also a student asking about um, pre-sessional courses as well, if you offer any pre-sessional English support. Yeah, so we have um, three pre-sessional pre courses, I think they're five, eight and 12 weeks long, depending on the IELTS score that you've got and the one you need to go to. Normally, it's um, if you only need to go up half a point, you do the five week, if you need to go up one whole point, you do the eight week. 1.5 the longer week um, I think it was asked about whether you could have that in the same visa this year's pre-sessional uh, I've actually been run online so you wouldn't need a visa um, and I think this question we had come in when Vic had that slide on about um, real life experience or something like that 
Um, so there's a question about, do you offer help and support with paid internships? I guess they're referring to the career counseling service, if there's any help and support in that area for students. You want me to answer that one? Um, yeah. We, we don't find internships for you, but our career service do give an awful lot of help. Um, they've got a lot of contacts with local companies who are looking for interns. Um, and, you know, those are kind of like uh, funnel through the, the, the career service uh, out into the, um, into the business school, out into um, the other colleges. So and then it's up to the students to apply for those um, those internships. Um, so it is up to the, the, the individual student to, to find them, but we do give an awful lot of help and support um, from that side of things. We do, have, we do have a lot of, we do have a lot of internships available that have been vetted uh, and the Career Service and our Student Employment Agency offer those. So you just register on the careers site and you can search for them. So yes, there is. There are there are a lot of opportunities. Melanie, actually, I was going to ask my next question to you. So, um, just if there's one thing a student wanted to take away from today's presentation about the business school, what would you think? Um, what could we say about the University of Derby's business school to the student? I think the most important thing is that we're an applied business school, and everything we do, students will study in relation to a real organization real data a real current issue with we really are an applied university you'll study theory but of course you'll be applying that in the context and you will get opportunities to work with and meet and network with real businesses while you're studying that sounds great i think that's what we a lot of the students especially with the graduate route come in now is kind of all career focus so yeah that's fantastic and any final thoughts and yeah if anyone else wants to jump in as well from the department um before we wrap up today's session um i'd just say i've seen people asking about admissions you can apply through the website go if you're interested in studying at the university first you need to think about the program you're interested in studying. if you go to the, the program page you can apply through there um, and you um, submit all your documents through the application portal. So um, check out the website, all of the information is on there. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, and on that application note, do feel free to contact the university directly. They've got an international um, office email address right there, or you can also contact SIUK at info at studying-uk.com. So I'll pop that email address in the chat. Um, but thank you so much to everyone who's joined us in today's session, and we hope to see you at the next one. And a big thank you to Anna, Vic, and Melanie as well for today's session. Thank you.